Hi guys, it's the evening of the 9th of September 2018 and I'm just about to take part in my first BTO Tourniel Point survey. Now tonight I'm covering Tetrad TL12F which is actually on the east side of Luton Airport. In fact the centre of the Tetrad is actually on the runway at Luton Airport so this should be an interesting one. So let's get on our way and see how it goes. So here's a little bit of information while we're on our way. The Tetrad, of course, as you can see here, is centred over the runway at Luton Airport, which is in Bedfordshire. But it's a two by two kilometre square Tetrad. And that does include some other woodland that's also surrounding that area. We've got here, uh, with stocks wood, uh, burnt wood, and also a section of Wigmore Park. Uh, that particular area there isn't actually wooded but I believe that it's um, fields with scrub it could be quite good it might also be good for some other species of owls so we're heading our way um, I'm gonna head towards Chilton Green which is just to the southeast of the runway there and I know that there's a road that runs alongside fairly close to the uh, border of the runway uh, that's safe to visit and um, we won't look too suspicious if I've got any uh, binoculars or photography gear hanging around the runway there. So let's get on our way and see what we can find. So we're just heading into our Tetrad here. I'm um, just on Chilton Green Road or Chilton Green Lane. And we're just heading towards the nearest point to the center of the Tetrad. Now these lanes themselves look pretty good for finding uh, Tawny Owl. In fact, I may have just heard one. Well, we'll find somewhere to stop and we'll have a little explore, shall we? Right, I couldn't be sure if that was a tawny owl I just heard. There's a lot of wind noise and um, also noise from the aeroplanes coming over as we're so close to the runway here. It did sound like a female tawny owl calling and I will check back down that lane on the way back um, but let's get out and I'll show you a little bit of the surroundings where I am now I'll show you how close we are to the actual airport so this spot could be a challenge but we're going to see how we get on so here we are about as close as we can get to the centre of the Tetrad we're right on the edge of the runway at Luton Airport here this is just to give you an idea of the kind of environment I'm going to have to deal with pretty noisy. It's not ideal territory right here for Tawny Owls, but we do have some nice country lanes and some areas of woodland in the direction we've just come from and the surrounding area. So we'll head that way, see what we can find, and I'll explain a little bit about how we actually take part in the survey. Okay, so the two by two kilometre square tetrads are randomly selected across the country. And the idea is to visit in the first couple of hours after sunset. Now, the time period is between halfway through August to near the end of October to do the survey. And what you should do is visit your selected Tetrad um, on at least two occasions. Three would be preferable. And take two surveys per evening of 10 minutes each of a total of 20 minutes and then you would then note down um, any calls or songs which is the hooting call of the tawny owl and from that we can define how many possible territories there are. Now the visits to your selected tetrad should be within two weeks of each other whether it be two visits you're planning on doing or the maximum of three and there's a data entry form online and there's a few fields to fill in with some other information that could be important. Of course, your date of visit, but also some information such as the cloud coverage. Now that's important because um, tawny owls, in particular, the males that are singing with the hooting call, are more likely to be active on a night where there's say a full moon. Um, 
So on a night like tonight, where there's about 50-50 cloud coverage, um, which wouldn't be too bad for the tawny owls, um, you'd have to uh, enter the data into the form here, and it's measured in eighths. So, for instance, tonight where there's 50-50 cloud, that would be four-eighths cloud coverage, and then that's taken into account when the data's entered. Now, the other information required on the data form is the start time of your actual survey and the number of hooting tawny owls you've heard, the number calling tawny owls you've heard, and if you can estimate how many territories there are, then there's a section here for entering other species. This is optional, but the presence of barn owl, short-eared owl, long-eared owl, and little owl, for instance, can have an effect on the numbers of tawny owl in the area. Uh, that would be down to competition for prey, and also the fact that the owls are holding territory, uh, they could hold the territory against another species of owl. Um, it also asks for um, the same information for your second um, set of 10 minutes. And if you've got a particularly tricky area, or well, that's hard to visit, and you want to stay for longer, there's an option for a 30 minute survey, which is uh, three lots of 10 minutes. And there's a section also at the bottom here. So if you have any local knowledge of the area that you're surveying, um, do you know if any tawny owls have been present in the Tetrad within the last six months? And also if the visit that you've made is the last visit to this Tetrad this season. So if you can fill out the form as um, fully as you can, this will give the BTO as much information as possible um, for them to put together the data that we've all entered and then be able to map out how many territories there are across the country. So we're heading now back to some of the quietest spots where we're more likely to hear tawny owls calling or singing. Now when I say singing, that of course is the hooting call but as it's the adult males that are trying to actually attract female or hold territory, that's the equivalent to songbirds singing. So that's what I mean when I say singing, just in case that causes any confusion. Now I'm in an area now called Diamond End. Um, this road is only just passable in my car. It's about one car wide and um, there's a lot of holes and rocks in the road. But I'm trying to find somewhere that's a little bit more likely for there to be tawny owls calling. Um, somewhere that's a little bit more sheltered from the wind, a little bit less disturbed from the airport. So we'll carry on down here and I'll, um, I'll try and find somewhere where we can set up and um, start to take the survey. But uh, at the moment, I'm just trying to find the perfect spot. Right, so I've picked a spot that I think is most likely for us to hear tawny owls tonight. It's on Chilton Green Lane, which is the lane where I thought I might have heard a female tawny owl calling when we first arrived. Now, it's still pretty windy, um, but we have got, just to the side of us, um, there's a strip of woodland and between the woodland there's some um, openings where there's some arable fields. Now this lane itself could also be pretty good for tawny owl as it's wooded on both sides. So let's see how we go. I'm going to make a note of the time that we actually start in a sec and then um, we'll listen out. We'll do a 10 minutes and then um, make a note of anything that we've heard or any other owls and um, we'll wait 10 minutes maybe and then we'll start another 10 minute survey um, one thing we can certainly still hear is the airport and the planes coming into land and taking off but um, we'll start the survey now and we'll see how it goes now I've just noticed while we're waiting here that this strip of land between the road and the woodland over there is an area of long rough grassland now this is the type of area that we're most likely to find bar now now I don't know if there's been any barn owls reported here in the past, but it's worth keeping an eye out. And if we do manage to record any barn owls, 
then we should put the data into the BTO form online because that information is very important as a territory held by Bar now at this time of year will have implications on the territories of the Tawny Owls. Now we've just finished session one of the Tawny Owl survey and uh, there were no signs of any Tawny Owls, didn't hear any calls or hooting songs. I have just seen a pipistrelle bat that was following this hedgerow here all the way down the lane and was turning round and then flying all the way back up just past me. There's no chance of me getting it on the video on my phone. But uh, this is a behaviour that pipistrelles often exhibit. They'll follow the hedge line because any uh, insects or moths that fly out of the bushes there um, will be a food source for the bats and they'll uh, try to catch them in flight and eat them. Um, I was quite surprised to see such a dog. I don't know if you can hear that or whether we can actually pick it up on the phone. There's a bat calling just near to me right now. Yeah, I was quite surprised to see a pipistrelle in flight um, in the weather as it is right now because the wind's actually picked up. I'd say it's um, getting to be very windy now and there's quite a bit of moisture in the air. It's actually getting slightly foggy almost and the cloud cover has increased to 100%. So when we enter the data into our form for session two, we should now know that it was eight eighths of cloud cover, which is the equivalent to 100%. So I've just finished session two of tonight's tawny owl survey. Um, there were no signs of any tawny owls, no calls of females, no hoots of the male, um, didn't see any other owls of any other type. Very quiet, in fact. Um, just the odd pipistrelle bat flying past. No foxes, no badgers, nothing. It probably doesn't help because it's so windy and um, the weather's actually getting worse. The cloud cover's increasing. It's getting colder and there's a bit more moisture in the air. It looks like it's actually going to spill or start to rain soon. So um, we'll move on and um, we'll maybe drive along the lanes on the way back to my place just to see if there's any tawny owls there. Um, but it isn't a complete loss because the information is still valuable. Uh, the information about where there aren't tawny owls is just as important as where they are. And that's part of the reason for taking part in the BTO survey. Um, but it doesn't mean, of course, that they're definitely not here. The weather conditions aren't great tonight. So we'll return on another night when the conditions are better and we'll see how we get on then. So let's get on our way and I'll try some of the lanes just to see if we can find any owls or any other wildlife on the way home. Um, but it's great just to be out, to be honest. But let's see what we find on the way back. So I'm back home now. We didn't have any luck. Um, didn't see any tawny owls even on the lanes local to where I live. Um, but that's okay for today. We can um, go back and try the Tetrad at Luton Airport, TL12F. Um, in the next couple of weeks and see if we have any better luck. I don't think the weather helped us tonight. If you'd like to find out any more information or you'd like to join up to do the BTO Tawny Owl Point Survey, the website is https colon forward slash forward slash www.bto.org forward slash volunteer dash surveys forward slash project dash owl forward slash tawny dash owl dash point dash survey and if you go to the website there you'll get all the information you need and if there's any tetrads available still in the area where you live or anywhere that you visit um, all you need to do is follow the information on the website and you'll be able to sign up and um, do your bit for citizen science and um, yeah let's see if we can put together a map of all the tawny owl territories throughout the country between us uh, take care till next time and um, good luck if you 
try any surveys yourself, or even if you're just out and about and trying to find wildlife in your local area. Take care. Bye-bye.